بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله boys and girls mummies and daddies cats and kittens grandmas and grandpas uncles and aunts and everybody out there I hope you're having a fantastic Ramadan enjoying your day without munching away all day long breakfast brunch lunch supper uh, snacks boom, 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 eating all day long this uh, uh, not eating and giving up food and drink all day long and eating at very particular times is extremely healthy for the body and it's healthy for the mind and it's healthy for the soul it keeps your mind focused because you know you're going to eat at very particular times it's not going to be you're going to walk into the kitchen and eat all day long okay i hope you're all doing well and you had a good night's sleep and you've got some good energy in yourselves and we're going to carry on speaking about the blessed life of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam so yesterday we finished off speaking about the rebuilding of the kaaba and how the prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he was the one who placed the black stone back into its place and he asked all of the leaders of the families of Mecca to hold the cloth in which he placed the black stone and then he put it back into its place. Now we're going to carry on. How old is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam by now? He's around the age of 35. 35. And he's living with his wife Khadija radiallahu anha and he has his children also. At this same time, uh, something very important that took place was the following. And we're going to speak about some of the things that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did uh, from now till the time that he told the people that he is the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So one of the things that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was always worried and concerned about, he was always concerned about other people and he wanted other people to be well and he wanted other people to have enough to eat Ha, be in, in a good state he looked at his uncle Abu Talib who used to look after him when he was a young child and he saw that Abu Talib had loads of kids but Abu Talib was a poor man and he didn't have too much wealth with which he could look after all of these lots of children so what did the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam think he thought I'm going to take one of the children of Abu Talib are you one of my cousins and bring him to my house and I look after him what a good idea so he went to his uncle he went to his other uncle Sayyidina Abbas Sayyidina Abbas was also a, uh, he was a rich man so the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went to his uncle Sayyidina Abbas and he said dear uncle and Sayyidina Abbas said yes nephew he said I've been thinking that, uh, that my uncle Abu Talib is a poor man and he's got loads of kids and he finds it difficult to provide for all of them and he finds it difficult to feed all of them and I was thinking how about I take one of his children to my home and I look after him and you take the other one to your home and you look after him like that what will happen is uh, Abu Talib will find it easier to look after the rest of the children. Some of his worry will be lessened. And I think we should do this for, for my uncle Abu Talib. Sayyidina Abbas was a very intelligent man. And he was a very kind person. And he was a leader amongst his people. He said to his nephew Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, That's a fantastic idea. You're such a caring, kind person. I agree with that too. Let's both go to the house of Abu Talib. So they both went to the house of Abu Talib. Knock, knock. Who's there? It's Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's Abbas. Oh, my dear brother and my dear nephew. Welcome. Come in. What's brought you along today? And they both sat down with Abu Talib. And Abu Talib asked them, What's brought you along today? How can I help you? And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, Oh dear uncle, I saw that you are uh, a poor man and you've got lots of children and I thought we should help you out with your children and Sayyid uh, Abu Talib's like 
Mm. What do you mean, my nephew? And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I was suggesting that I should take one of your children and I will look after him. And my uncle Al-Abbas, your brother, he also accepted the idea and he said he will take another one of your children and look after him. Like that, uh, two of your children will be looked after, one by your nephew and one by your brother. And then that will lessen the amount of people that you have to provide for in your home. Abu Talib's like, that's a fantastic idea. How kind of you, how generous of you, how good of you, knowing that I'm a poor man, that you want to help me look after my children. That's so, so kind of you. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was always a caring and always a kind person who always uh, wanted to help people all the time. And he was thinking, he would always think about how people would need help from him. So Abu Talib said to them, uh, Abu Talib said to them, you can take any of my children except my son Aqil. Leave him for me. Why? Because Aqil was the most beloved of children to Abu Talib. So he didn't want to let Aqil go. And he said, you can take any one of the rest. So the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, who did he take? He took his cousin Ali radiallahu an as a very young boy and he said, you come along with me, my, my cousin. And he gave him a good strong hug and he said, pack your bags, you're going on a camping trip. He said, cousin, where are you taking me, my big cousin? He said, you can come and stay in my house. And he's like, yes, I can go on a trip. I'm going to stay in my cousin's house. And he was well excited about it. Just the way you guys go and stay and have sleepovers in your cousin's houses, in your uncle's houses, in your aunt's, in your grandparents' houses. Don't you go and have sleepovers? Of course you do. So Ali, he was only a little boy. He thought, yes, I'm going for a sleepover. But he didn't realize this is going to be a long sleepover. But he didn't mind it because his older cousin, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was a very kind, caring person. So then, Sayyiduna Abbas radiallahu anhuma, radiallahu an, he took his nephew, uh, he took his nephew Ja'far radiallahu an, who was also a young boy. And he said to Ja'far, give him a good tight hug. He said, you son, you can come with me, my dear nephew. And then he took him to his house. And both of these boys are like, wow, this is well exciting. Where one of them is going to their uh, cousin's house and the other is going to his uncle's house. And they were well excited. And Abu Talib was like, yeah, this is so kind of you. Now you guys will look after Ali and Ja'far and you will feed them and you will clothe them and you will um, teach them and educate them. And I will uh, work on the rest of my children because I've got so many children. So why this story is important is we are seeing all of the characters and all of the people who were very close to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam even before he told the people that he is a prophet. So which person came into the house of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam before he told the people that he is a prophet? Ali radiallahu an. So Ali radiallahu an was in the house of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He used to play with his cousins and his aunt Khadija radiallahu anha used to cook for him, used to feed him, used to clothe him. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam used to stroke him on his back, used to speak to him, used to teach him. And he used to learn from the manners of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, from his kindness, from his love and caring and sharing nature at home, which built up this amazing personality who was Ali radiallahu an. And later on in life, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam said about Ali radiallahu an, he said, Ana Madinatul Ilmi wa Aliyum Babuha. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I am the city of knowledge. I am the city of knowledge. And Ali is its door. So if you want to go to the city of knowledge, you have to go through the door of Ali radiallahu an, which means that Sayyidina Ali radiallahu an was extremely knowledgeable. 
How did he become extremely knowledgeable? He became extremely knowledgeable because he stayed very, very close to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam from a very, very young age. And so what do all of you little boys and girls learn from that? That as young children, we should stay very close to very learned people, to the scholars, to the imams, to people who teach us, to our teachers. We should stay very close to them so we can learn uh, as much as possible from them. We can learn from their teachings. We can learn from their mannerisms. We can learn from their uh, company being around them. We'll see how they eat. We see the, how they drink, how they sit, they stand, how they move around, how they speak to e each other and other people. This is extremely important that we always keep good company. So Ali radiallahu anhu was extremely fortunate that he was uh, in the company of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from a very young age in the house of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, and Sayyidina Abbas, who did he take? He took his nephew Ja'far, the son of Abu Talib. He took him with him to his house. So he grew up in the house of Al-Abbas radiallahu an. And Sayyidina Al-Abbas, he was a very, uh, very intelligent man. And he was a leader amongst his people. And he was a very eloquent man. What does that mean? Very eloquent man. When he spoke, his language was extremely good. And he used to say poetry too. One day the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to his uncle, Sayyiduna al-Abbas, he said, A'jabani jamalu ammin nabiyyi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, I've been amazed by the Prophet's uncle's beauty. By the Prophet's uncle's beauty. Sayyidina Abbas said, Which beauty are you speaking about, O nephew? And the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to him, Al-Lisan, your tongue, you are so eloquent, you are so polite, your, your words are filled with manners and good uh, etiquettes and good, um, good, uh, good words. You always say good. So, uh, Ja'far, uh, the, uh, the son of Abu Talib, the cousin of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he grew up in the house of Sayyidina Al-Abbas, who was a very eloquent man. He was a very kind man in his words, but he was also very generous and he was a leader of a man. So he also grew up in the house of, of somebody who was very, very important later on in the life of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So we have to remember that Ali radiallahu an was growing up in the house of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And do you know later on, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said three things about Ali radiallahu an. What did he say? He said, Awwaluhum silman wa a'lamuhum wa ahlamuhum. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said about Ali radiallahu an, he was the first of people to accept Islam. Wow. What, how come he... Why was he the first of people to accept Islam? Because he grew up around the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was the first child, first boy to accept Islam. He said, A'lamuhum. And he is the most knowledgeable of all of the companions of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And number three, A'lamuhum. And he is the softest, the most gentlest and the most kindest of all of them. Even though he was extremely brave and he used to go into wars and into battlefields with a lot of bravery, a lot of courage and a lot of muscle. But that doesn't mean you can't be soft and kind to the people who live around you in your homes, to the people that are your friends. Of course, when somebody goes into the battlefield, they have to become a tough, rough soldier. But when that soldier is at home, that soldier has to be calm. That soldier has to be uh, generous, has to be, uh, um, has to be soft and gentle with the people around him in the house. So Sayyidina Ali radiallahu an was living in the house of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Another very important person in the life of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam before he told the people that he is a prophet was a man whose name was Zayd, the son of Haritha. Now remember this name, Zayd, the son of Haritha. And I'll tell you something about Zayd, the son of Haritha. Do you know in the whole Quran, 
from the beginning right till the end. None of the companions of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam are mentioned by name except Zayd, the son of Haritha. He is the only companion in the whole Quran who is mentioned by name. Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu an, he's mentioned in the Quran, but not by his name. Sayyida Aisha radiallahu anha is mentioned in the Quran, but not by her name. Sayyida Fatima radiallahu anha is mentioned in the Quran, but not by her name. The wives of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are mentioned in the Quran, but not by their names. And many, many, many other companions are mentioned in the Quran, but not by their names. The only fortunate man from the companions of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who is mentioned in the Quran by his name is who? Zayd, the son of Haritha. Now what's the story of this man, Zayd ibn Haritha? So Zayd, he was once upon a time traveling with his mother and he was a young boy and they were traveling in a caravan that was going past Makkah. As the tra caravan was going past Makkah, there were some robbers, naughty people, and they, they hijacked this caravan and they uh, attacked this caravan. And what did they do? They stole all of the goods uh, that were inside this caravan. And guess what they also stole? They stole a little boy, Zayd ibn Haritha, from his mommy. Mm. That's very, very naughty, isn't it? We shouldn't take people away from their mothers and fathers. No. We shouldn't even take uh, baby children away from their parents, even if they are animals. Even if we have uh, a baby animal, we are not allowed to split the baby animal away from its mother. We must keep them together. And that's what the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us because baby children, they really, really need their mothers. So Zayd was in this caravan traveling with his mother and the caravan was attacked by some thieves and they stole lots of things, but they also stole uh, Zayd. Mm. You can imagine how upset his mother was and how much she cried and cried and cried. And then she went back home and told her husband too. And everybody started to search for this boy, Zaid, but nobody could find him. Because in Makkah, this boy was then sold as a slave. This boy was sold as a slave. And one of the people who bought this boy as a slave was Hakim ibn Hizam. Who was Hakim ibn Hizam? Hakim ibn Hizam was the nephew of Sayyida Khadija radiallahu anha. He was the nephew of Sayyida Khadija, the wife of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Of course, when Hakim ibn Hizam bought this young boy, he didn't know that he had been stolen and he had been kidnapped. Otherwise, he wouldn't have bought him. He thought he was just like a, another slave. So anyway, he bought him. And then after buying him, he gave this slave to his aunt Khadija radiallahu anha. So Khadija radiallahu anha, had this young boy whose name was Zayd. And after Khadija radiallahu anha married the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, she passed Zayd, the slave, to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and she said, you can have this slave and he will serve you and he will look after you and whatever you need, he will do it for you. And by that time, Zayd was about 20 years old. So Zayd would go everywhere the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa would go, Zayd would go with him. And Zayd would stay in his home too. And Zayd was watching and seeing very, very closely how the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa was a very honest man at home. He was a very kind man. He was a very generous man. And everything that people knew about him outside the home, he was exactly like that at home too. And that's something very important for all of you boys and girls out there. And what's that? Sometimes what happens when you leave out from your home and you go to school and you go shopping and you go on trips, 
you're very kind and polite to people around you. You always say thank you, you say please, you open the door for your teachers and friends at school, you're kind to people at the shops. That's amazing and that's really, really, really beautiful. But guess what? Sometimes some of you, when you come back home, you forget how to be polite to people in your own home. Mm -mm. And you forget how to say please and thank you. Mm -mm. And you forget how to open the door for people in your home and let them through first. And you forget how you should make your bed after you wake up. The way you go on a trip and a residential trip from school and the teachers tell you, make sure you make your beds and you fold away your duvets after you wake up and you fold away your clothes and make sure after eating on your trip, you clean your plates and you take them to the sink and you wash them up. All of that. Sometimes you boys and girls forget to do that at home because you think this is my home. Mommy and daddy will do it. Oh no, my dear children. What we have to remember is the manners that we use outside of our home. We must also use them inside of our home. And that's what the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam always, always did was that the way he behaved outside of his home and the way he was so kind and so trustworthy and so honest outside of his home, he was exactly the same inside of his home. So he was loving, he was caring, he was kind, he was polite, he was filled with manners and he was loving and he was so generous at home also. So the scholars have said, you are known by your character at home, not by your character outside. Even, your, even though your character outside your home is extremely important, but what's even more important is that you have good character with the people who live in the same house as you. Because your brothers and sisters, your mummies and daddies, your grandmas and grandpas, your cats and kittens, your kitchen and your cutlery, your beds and your bedrooms, your clothes and your washing, and your front rooms and your living rooms, and your gardens and your front gardens. All of that has a greater right over you that you be kind to it more than people outside of your home who perhaps you don't even know. You should be kind to them. But who has more right of you being kind to them? The people who you live with, the kids and cats that, that are in your home, your front garden, your back garden, that you keep them clean, your, the insides of your homes, that you keep it clean. So Zayd ibn Haritha was growing up in the house of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and he was noticing that this man is so amazing. The way he behaves outside in the public, amongst people, that's exactly how he's at home. He doesn't become angry at home. He doesn't become fussy at home. He doesn't become um, moody at home and kind outside. No, 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 no. He's also kind at home. He never becomes moody. He never becomes angry. He never becomes so unpolite. He's always polite. And Zayd ibn Hari says, wow. And then uh, Zayd would always stay with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, learning from this amazing man. Guess what? One day, Zayd's father, who lived far, far away, heard that there was a young man in Makkah whose name was Zayd. And he thought, he said to his wife, My dear wife, do you think that this young man who is known in Makkah as Zayd now, do you think that could be our child who we lost when he was young many, many years ago? She said, you can go and try and ask because I'm still missing my dear son. So Zayd's father, Al-Haritha, and his uncle, they set out on a journey from far, far away, coming to Makkah. And after many, 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 many days of traveling, they arrived in Makkah al-Mukarramah. And what did they find? They found the Meccan people. They asked around, have you heard of a young man called Zayd? And everybody said, yes, there's a young man called Zayd, and he lives with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the, the father said, who is this Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? And the Meccan people said, he's a very kind man, very generous, very honest, very truthful man. If you go to him for anything, he'll give it to you. And Zaid's father was like, yes, 
Now I can perhaps get my son back. So he knocked on doors and he said, I'm looking for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And somebody says, he lives down the street on that house. So he walked to that door, he knocked and it was said, who is it? And the man said, my name is Harisa. And I've come looking for a man called Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam opened the door. And he said to him, come in Mr. Harisa, how can I help you? And he sat down and Harisa and his brother said to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa we believe that you have a young man, his name is Zaid. And I am a man whose name is Harisa and this is my brother. And I lost my son Zaid a long time ago when he was traveling with his mother in a caravan. The caravan was, uh, was stolen and ch my child was kidnapped. And I believe that the person you have may be my son. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa asked him more. And he said, indeed, this is your son. So Harisa's da uh, Harisa, Zaid's dad, was really excited. And he was relieved that my son is still alive. So he said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he said, ask for anything in this whole wide world and I will pay it to you. Just give me my son back. Wow, that's how kind parents are. That's how kind your parents are too. They will give up anything in this whole world just to save you, just to look after you. So look after your parents. Take the opportunity of your parents. Kiss their hands, kiss their foreheads and give them some good tight huggies and say, Mommy, Daddy, I love you because I know you love me. This is how much parents love their children. Zaid's father said, I'll give you anything, O oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Just give me my child. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was much more kinder than that. He gave Zaid's father a big smile. And he said, well, he's your son. You can take him. I don't want anything from you. If he wants to go with you, then that's his choice. And if he wants to stay with, him, with me, then that's his choice. He's a grown adult now. So Zaid's father went and he spoke to Zaid. He said, my dear son, you might not recognize me, you might not know me, but I am your father and this is your uncle. And we have come from far, far away because you were kidnapped as a child. And we've spoken to your master, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he is, is he's saying that you can come with us free of charge and we don't even have to pay him anything. As long as you want to come with us, you can come with us. Come, my dear son, your mommy is waiting for you at home. What do you think Zaid said? Zaid ibn Haritha was thinking about all of those days and nights, all of those beautiful moments, all of those uh, times of kindness and generosity, all of those special moments with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and learning from his sweet words and seeing his beautiful face and eating with his so eating, eating his food with him and living amongst his children and being cared for by Khadija radiallahu anha. He remembered all of those moments of years and years and years of living with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And guess what? He said to his father, you may, be, you may be my father, my dear father. I can't give up living with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to live with anybody in this whole wide world. And his father was shocked. He said, son, I'm your dad. This is your uncle. And Zaid said, I'm sure you're my dad. I'm sure he's my uncle. But do you know the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? He is greater to me. He is more beloved to me. He is more generous to me. And his moments and his sight and his kindness is greater than the kindness of a father, of an uncle and even that of a mother. I can't leave him for anybody in this whole wide world. Ya Allah. His father was shocked. But what do we understand? We understand how the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, treated people and even treated slaves so nice and so kind that those slaves never ever ever wanted to leave him. And this is why the Prophet Muhammad said to us, 
none of you can have full faith until you don't love me more than your parents, more than your children, and more than everybody in this whole world. We should love the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam more than our parents, more than our children, and more than all the people in this world. Why? Because the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is our teacher who taught us how to love our parents, how to be kind to them, how to respect them, how to honor them. He is the one who taught us how to look after our children, to love them, how to educate them, how to teach them. And he is the one who taught us how to be kind to people, how to speak to people, how to be polite to people, and how to uh, interact and engage with different people. So the one who taught us about our parents, our children, and all other people in this world, that's our greatest teacher who we must love more than our parents, more than our children, and more than everybody in this whole wide world. How amazing. So Zayd ibn Haritha said to his dad, he said, now that you know I'm safe and I'm well, I want you also to know that I'm in extremely safe hands. I'm in extremely kind hands. Please do go back and give my mummy salam and my brothers and sisters salam. And perhaps one day when you all come to Mecca, I can meet you all. But I'm not going to leave the house of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to go to any home in this entire world. You can see how great of a man the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was that anybody who came close to him would never, ever, ever want to leave him. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I want you all boys and girls to tell me. Imagine you saw the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What would you do? Would you give him a big tight hug and say, I love you, O Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Zayd ibn Haritha stayed with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to the Meccan people, now you can call this young man Zayd ibn Muhammad, Zayd the son of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because he wants to stay with me. So all of the people in Mecca used to call him Zayd ibn Muhammad, Zayd the son of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was called this for many, many, many years until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and told him, O oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, now don't call him Zayd, the son of Muhammad. Call him Zayd, the son of Haritha, who is his real father. Even though you adopted him, but you should always call adopted children by the surnames and the family names of their own parents, not of the adopted parents. So, uh, sometimes in... Now people adopt children because some children lose their parents and their parents die and nobody's there to care for them. So what other families do is they take those children from the council and they look after those children and those children become part of the home and they play with the children of the home. But when those children grow up, we should always write their names with their father's name, with their real father's name, not with their adopted father's name. So Zayd, he used to be known as Zayd ibn Muhammad. The Zayd, the son of Muhammad وسلم, until Allah said, don't call him Zayd, the son of Muhammad, but call him Zayd, the son of Haritha. Haritha, who was his real father. This Zayd, he stayed with the Prophet وسلم, for a very, very long time throughout the life of the Prophet until he grew up and he married Umm Ayman Barak al Habashiya radiallahu anha, that woman who used to nurse the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from a young age. And from that marriage with Umm Ayman Barak al Habashiya, he had a son whose name was Usama bin Zayd. Usama, the son of Zayd radiallahu anhu. Now, Usama, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, loved him to bits. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa used to carry uh, his grandson Sayyiduna Hassan on his shoulder, on the other shoulder he used to carry Usama radiallahu an, who is the son of Zayd, the Zayd, Zayd ibn Harisa who grew up in the house of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa So the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa used to sit Sayyiduna Hassan on one side and Sayyiduna Usama on the other side. Do you know why? 
to teach people of the world that there is no difference pe between people, whether a person is a slave or a person is a free person, a free man. Sayyiduna Hassan, he was the son of Sayyiduna Ali and Sayyida Fatima and the grandson of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who, are the leader, who is the leader of the prophets. And Usama was the son of a slave whose name was Zayd. But the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam put both of the children on each shoulder to show the world that there is no difference between these two human beings. They are both equal in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Zayd ibn Haris, so Ali radiallahu an grew up in the house of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from a young age. And he learned from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Zayd ibn Haritha also grew up in the house of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he saw how kind and how, how gracious the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was that he didn't want to leave the Prophet to even go back to his own parents' home. So this is how great the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was in his own home. That the people who entered into his home never ever ever wanted to leave from from his home. So what we learn from these lessons is that we should have the best of character, the best of mannerisms, the best of etiquette, the best of qualities, and the highest level of politeness for the people we live with first and foremost, and then for all other people outside of our homes. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he makes this Ramadan a blessed Ramadan for me and for all of you and all of your parents. Salamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته dear uh, dear boys and girls mummies and daddies cats and kittens and grandpas and grandpas and everybody out there so uh, in the first lesson we spoke about the explanation of Surah Al-Fatiha in the second lesson we spoke about the explanation of a verse in which Allah says, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sta'inu bis sabri wa salah inna allaha ma'as sabirin which means, O oh believing people, take help from patience and from prayer. Indeed, Allah is with the patient ones. And we explain that. And today we're going to take a verse from the third juz, from the third para, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah waliyu alladheena amanu yukhrijuhum min al-zulumati ila al-nur Wal-ladheena kafaru awliyaa'uhum al-taagutu yukhrijunahum min al-nur ila al-zulumat Ulaika ashabu al-nari hum fiha khalidun Okay, in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allahu waliyu alladheena amanu. Allah is the friend of those people who have faith. So Allah is the friend of all of the faithful people. Who are the faithful people? Of all of the Muslims. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is their friend. Now, this is something really, really amazing. And I chose this particular verse for a very, very particular reason. And that is that I want all of you boys and girls and your mummies and daddies and your uncles and aunts and grandmas and grandpas and everybody out there, I want everybody to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is their friend and Allah is their best friend ever. Is that clear? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is your best friend ever. So if anybody asks you, who's your best friend? The first you sh- person you should always say, the first uh, thing that you should say is Allah is my best friend. Is that clear? So, Allah said, Allah is the friend uh, of the believing people. Of all of the people who take up faith and enter into Islam, Allah is their friend. How is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala their friend? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is their friend. Because Allah has given them the Qur'an in which Allah gives them messages. Allah gives them instructions. And when they listen to Allah's instructions, they know what to do. And they know what not to do. The things to do and things not to do. And Allah tells them stories in the Qur'an. And Allah also helps them at their times of difficulty when they make dua. And when they pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who helps them? Allah does. Allah says in another verse of the Qur'an, وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا وَيَرُزُقُهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبْ Allah says, and those people who fear Allah, who will fear Allah? Of course, the friends of Allah, the people who Allah is friends with, they will fear Allah. Allah says, and those who fear Allah, يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا Allah makes ease for them. Allah makes uh, ways out for them from their difficulty. وَيَرْزُقْهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبْ And Allah gives them food and drink and provides for them from places that they never ever imagined. Why? Because they make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in another verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, أَمَّنْ يُجِيبُ الْمُضْطَرَّ إِذَا دَعَاهُ وَيَكْشِفُ السُّوءُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and who is it? That removes أَمَّنْ يُجِيبُ الْمُطَّرَ And who is it that replies and responds to the dua Of the one who is in a serious situation The one who is in an emergency situation The one who is in a very anxious situation Who is it that responds to that person's dua وَيَكْشِفُ السُّوءُ And removes them their difficulty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And why does Allah do that? Why does Allah provide for people from places that they never imagined. Why does Allah make ways out for people from their difficulties? 
And why does Allah respond and reply to their du'as? And Allah said in another verse of the Quran, لَيْسَ لَهَا مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ كَاشِفَةً Nothing can remove difficulties except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in another verse of the Quran, Allah said, وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ دُعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ And Allah said, and your Lord said, Udu'uni, pray to me, make dua to me, and I will respond to you. I will reply to you. And in another verse, Allah said, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ Allah said to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and when people ask you about me, ask you about Allah, فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ Tell them, I'm close. أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانِ I respond to the dua of the one who makes dua when they make dua. فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ So people should uh, accept my way. فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي And people should take faith in me. لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ And then they will be guided. So when we take up faith in Allah, what happens? Allah becomes our friend. When we have iman and faith, and belief and Islam in our hearts, we have to know that then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala becomes our friend. And when Allah becomes our friend, then Allah replies to our du'as, Allah gives us all of the good things that we ask Him for, Allah gives us good in this world, gives us Jannah in the next world, protects us from the shaitan, Allah keeps us with the good, pious, righteous people, Allah makes us love the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa read and memorize the Qur'an. How amazing is it to have Allah as your best friend? Wow. Imagine before this lesson, if somebody asked you, who's your best friend? And you said somebody in your class at school. Why do you say that they're your best friend? Because they play with you. Because they share their food and their snacks with you. They like to go on trips with you and be your partners in trips. Because they only keep your secrets and don't tell anybody else. Because they help you when you're in need. Because uh, they look after your, your belongings when you've gone away somewhere. And they don't cheat you. They don't lie to you. Uh, they, they keep your trust. And you can trust them. For all of those reasons, you have your little boys and girls and your friends at school who are your best friends. But after this lesson, I want everybody to say all the time, Allah is my best friend. And if somebody asks you, why is Allah your best friend? You can tell them. Because Allah said in the Quran, Allah is the friend of the believing people. And Alhamdulillah, I'm a believing person. And Allah is my friend. And Allah is my best friend. Why? Because Allah looks after me. Allah gives me. Allah provides for me. Allah lets me breathe. Allah lets me wake up in the morning. Allah lets me eat. Allah provides food for me. Allah gives me good health, Allah lets me grow. Everything in this whole world that we are given comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tell me, should that not be our best friend, the one who gives us everything in this whole wide world? Shouldn't that be our best friend? Indeed, that should be our best friend. Because we love people who give us gifts. We love people who are kind to us. But shouldn't we love Allah more than everybody in this world because He gives us everything in this world? Indeed, He gives us every single thing in this world. This is why the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what did he say? He said, أَحِبُّ اللَّهَ لِمَا يَغْذُوكُمْ بِهِ مِنْ نِعَمِهِ Love Allah for all of the blessings and all of the good things that Allah gives you. Love Him for all of those things. Aha! Because normally we love people who give us things. And if we know that Allah has given us everything, how many things has Allah given us? Mm, can we count them? Allah said in the Quran, Allah said, and if you try to count and enumerate all of the blessings of Allah, you will never ever be able to count them because there are so, so many blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But why does Allah give us all of these blessings? Who can tell me? 
Allah gives us all of these blessings because Allah is our friend. And we should say Allah is our best friend. And He's our friend. When everybody disappears from around us, He's still with us. You know the story of the man who gave his three children a sweet each and said, go and eat this sweet. When nobody can see you, two of the boys ate the sweet. One under the staircase and one hiding away in the garden. And the third one came back and said, Daddy, I didn't eat it. And Daddy said, why didn't you eat it? He said, because I couldn't find a place where nobody could see me. Daddy said, are you sure? He said, wherever I went, I knew that Allah could see me. So I couldn't eat this sweet anywhere in hiding away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we have to know, when we go to sleep at night, and our parents go away from us, and everybody's sleeping on their own beds, and we're fast asleep, who's looking after us? Allah. What does Allah say in the Quran about that? قُلْ مَنْ يَكْلَأُكُمْ بِاللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ Allah says, And who is it that takes care of you, gentle care of you, at night and during the day? It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who takes care of little babies in their cots and in their cradles when their mommies and daddies have gone to sleep? These little babies are very tiny. Who takes care of them? Allah. Why? Because Allah is our friend. Allah looks after us. Allah defends us. Allah gives us. So for all of these reasons, Allah is our best friend. Now in this same verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says something else too. Allah says, Allahu waliyu alladheena amanu yukhrijuhum min al-zulumati ilan Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Allah is the friend of the believing people and he Allah takes them out of darknesses and into light which darknesses does Allah take us out of does he take us out of the night and into the day yes of course he does because once the night finishes and the sun rises the day comes and who is it that makes the night disappear and the day come Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but Allah says, يُخْرِجُهُمْ مِنَ الظُّلُمَاتِ إِلَى النُّورِ He always takes them out of darknesses and into light. So, does that mean even during the day there is a darkness? Yes. What type of darkness is that during the day? When it's nice and bright and it's light outside, there's still a darkness around. That's darkness of bad behavior. That's darkness of rude language that's darkness of uh, of not knowing allah that's darkness of not doing the things that allah told us to do that's the darkness of not keeping away from the things allah told us to keep away from all of these things are darknesses because they're ugly because they're not nice tell me if somebody is being mean to you is that nice do you feel nice or do you feel disgusted that's a darkness if somebody doesn't speak to you in a polite way, are you going to feel that's something nice or are you going to feel disgusted? You're going to feel that's horrible. That horribleness is a darkness. So Allah says, Allah takes the believers out of these horrible darknesses and into the light of Islam, which gives them polite character, nice behavior, a smile on their faces, makes them learn, worship Allah, makes them uh, want to study, want to be kind, want to be kind to their parents, to their brothers and sisters, to their animals, to the environment around them, and to all people in this whole wide world. All of that is knowledge. And knowledge is a light. Like the great Imam al-Shafi'i radiallahu anhu said, al-ilmu nurun. Knowledge is a light. How is it a light? It brightens your mind. You all, I'm sure you've all experienced this, that when you learn something at school or in maths, and you didn't know it before, you feel so excited, you feel so energetic, wow, I know how to do that sum, I know how to do that puzzle, I know how to put that jigsaw puzzle together, I know how to write that word and spell it out, I know how to read this book. You feel so excited, and you feel that your brain is growing, all of that is light. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our friend 
who takes us out of the horrible darknesses of this world of, uh, of, of misbehavior, of bad behavior, of, of bad character, of unpoliteness into the light of Islam. And Allah said, Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth. I.e. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who lights up the heavens and the earth with the light of the Qur'an, with the light of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And you know what Allah said about the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Allah said, قَدْ جَاءَكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ نُورٌ وَكِتَابٌ مُبِينٌ Allah said, indeed has come to you from your Lord. قَدْ جَاءَكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ from Allah. Nurun, a light, wa kitabun mubin, and a clear book. The clear book is the Quran, and the light is the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So he was light in his character, light in his knowledge. When he taught people, people felt felt so relaxed, so calm, and filled with nur and light. So I want you all to remember this verse, and I want you all to remember that Allah is your best friend. Whenever you need anything, who are you going to ask? You're going to ask Allah. Whenever, uh, whenever you have a blessing, who are you going to thank? You're going to thank your best friend, who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for giving you all of these blessings. Till tomorrow, I'll see you later. Make sure you have a nice iftar party and make sure you make a dua for me and for all of the Muslims in this whole wide world and all of humanity that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us lots and lots of blessings from Ramadan and don't eat too much at iftar. See you later.